This is the fundamentals of fine tuning. Now this piano has been pitch raised and hopefully if I've done my precision pitch raise properly, the piano should be close to pitch within a cent or two. Um, there are a couple things to consider. We have conflicting things that we need to happen in the piano. When we move the pin, whether it's this way, that way, that way, or twisting, we'd like the speaking length of the string to move as well. But yet when we're done, we'd like it to stay stable. So if we're starting at A, 440, we'd like to be able to move sharp. If you can see the meter, move a little sharp. A little flat. That was a little farther flat. And it really is a feeling thing. You'll feel the pitch move sometimes, yet you won't feel the pin move at the bottom of the pin. Now what I'm looking for is that with about the same amount of pressure, I can make it go a little flat, I can make it go a little sharp to find the place. Now I'm using a meter as a reference here, um, and even for those of you that are oral tuners, I'd recommend getting something simple. that can also show the pitch. This is a free download. I, it's just on the registration now, so it'll time out after 30 seconds. And again, we're just showing a bookmark that you can show it goes sharp or flat. If you use a Korg tuner, get a real needle as opposed to the virtual needles, just because they tend to be a little bit more precise in what they're showing in relation to the pitch. Um, you want to feel that you can move sharp, you can move flat. And get to that spot to where even if you hit it, it's going to stay stable. And what we're doing is equalizing the tension between this section of the string around the pin, the speaking section and the back section, so that when you bring in the second string to work with the unison, it's the same kind of motion. You're going to go a little sharp. where you can feel that with just a slight movement of the hammer you, you get a slight sharp or a slight flat that you can leave it. On another video we'll discuss different types of hammers, whether you want to use something a little bit bigger um, and extremely rigid, it gives you a nice feel for what you know the pin is doing then. Then as you bring the third string into pitch, this way you're hearing the piano as the pianist will play it, all three strings together. And in a previous video, you've seen how to level the strings, how to make sure that the hammer is hitting all three strings at once, so you can get a nice, clear, pure tone. Now when working up in the treble, sometimes it's difficult for people to hear. same rules apply. What you notice I did different is a different strike. Instead of striking and waiting to hear, you get your ear to not listen to the impact sound and you're listening to the tone that goes through. Now the bass strings present their own set of problems. many times which the strings will never match perfectly. Um, and in this case, you're going to use that pocket technique, go a little flat, a little sharp, and you'll hear it get worse, get better, get worse again. And you're listening to the whole tone of the, of the sound, the whole envelope, not a specific partial. In effect, looking for the least bad place to put the note. Um, pitch locks are an option here. I don't know if you can see them. Right down in here, um, we've got some mismatched strings, and the clips help equalize the tone between the strings so that, so that even though the string doesn't really match,
there's always some underlying tension there, at least it matches better than without the pitch lock string couplers. So to reiterate, the fundamental skill is to be able to move the string so that the, the pitch changes. manner. Many pianos will fight this against you. You may have pins that don't move smoothly. You may have strings that catch there. Um, electronic tuners have a little bit of an advantage here because normally when you're orally tuning you need to move in small increments. Um, if we're dealing with a meter, all you need to do is make sure you end in the right spot. So even if you're a little bit sharp here and need to get a little bit flat and the string jumps so far, you can fight it back overshooting if you need to. To finally end up exactly where you want it to be. Taking your time to settle every unison because that's the building block of a tuning. Then after that, you'd make sure that the unisons, again, are solid where you want them to be. And that's covered in one of the other videos about how to set up the machine so that it mimics what you want to hear out of the piano to where the octaves fit and then it builds the structure within.